Sting no longer with the WWE, could we see him back at Impact Wrestling? Who do I think is playing suicide? Many signings this week for Impact Wrestling. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, could they be next? All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, Lewis Carlin here. Thanks for joining me today. So Sting, no longer with the WWE. He's a free agent. What does that mean for Impact Wrestling? And could we see Sting back in Impact Wrestling? Before I get into that, I just want to say thanks a lot again for the WWE for once again dropping the ball. Uh, they could have, they, they had a match that everybody wanted, Sting versus The Undertaker, and they once again are just not tuned in to what the fans want, and they did not give the fans the match that they all wanted. So great job there, WWE, once again. Okay, so how would Sting fit into Impact Wrestling today? Should he decide to come back? First of all, let, let's let, let's let's think of Sting for a second. Sting is sixty years old. Sixty years old. His his best days are way behind him. But he did say that he would come back for one more match if the price is right. Okay, he said this uh, a number of months ago. He would come back if the price is right. Now, of course, you know he keeps bringing up he wants that match against the Undertaker, but that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So. If he has that one more match and the price is right, how could we get that match in Impact Wrestling? And and who would that match be against? Well, first of all, I think Impact Wrestling could afford Sting. Like I'm not talking about a three year deal. I'm not talking about a long I'm talking about a three appearance deal. You know, that's 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 what I'm talking about. You know, and it's it's very it's 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 a it's not a um, unheard of scenario. It could happen. It's not an impossible scenario. Uh, so how would how would it, what who would who would he um, how would they bring him back? Okay, who would who would be his um, who would be his rival? Who would be his opponent? Obviously, it would have to be Moose. It would have to be Moose. Moose, the current TNA champion. And the scenario that, that, that would work is Moose, you know, says that he's the greatest TNA champion of all time. Sting could take exception to that because Sting has held that title many, many times. Uh, and Sting coming back, you know, you could do a pay-per-view. You could do a pay-per-view, uh, the return of Sting. Okay, the return of Sting returns to Impact Wrestling. You know, Sting comes out. Says he's happy to be there. You know, gives a huge speech, huge emotional speech. Fans are going nuts. Moose comes out, runs down Sting. Sting, take an exception to that again. Not going to get run down by Moose. You know, attacks Moose. You know, hits him a kick, puts him into the corner, does a corner splash, and takes out Moose. And then, and then we have the scenario for Moose versus Sting. Main event, one more match, last match ever for Sting. You know, TNA title on the line, Moose versus Sting. That would be a terrific, terrific scenario, terrific storyline. One that would have me, I would definitely be following that storyline, uh, like, like, like crazy. I would definitely love to see that storyline, but it's highly unlikely that that's going to happen. Again, like I said, Sting's going to be 70 years old in 10 years. So I don't know if he wants the one more match with Moose. I'm just saying it's, it's unlikely. It would be a great, great, great scenario, but it's an unlikely one. So how would they use them if they're able to? If they're able to to get Sting, you know, the, the the name Sting would just be having Sting in Impact Wrestling in any shape or any shape or form would be fantastic for Impact Wrestling. Legendary name Sting. So how would they use him? They could use him as a special guest referee, Moose defending the title against someone, and Sting special guest referee. Um, he could maybe. Try to reform the main event mafia. You know, be the leader of the main event mafia. Bring Sting and Kurt Angle in together. You know, and they they're looking for new members of the main main event mafia. You could do that. 
Um, you could bring him in. Oh, I was going to say you could bring him in as a uh, commissioner, but I, I think that's uh, that's lame. The commissioner, the commissioner uh, storyline is is running to the ground already. So I think that's that that'll be kind of lame. Uh, how else? How else could they bring him back? Um, uh, manager um, say there's somebody that's uh, out to challenge um, Moose for that TNA title or whoever the Impact World title is. Sting could be their manager. Uh, so there's a lot of ways you could bring Sting in. Just, just, just to get him into Impact Wrestling. Just to get the name Sting into Impact Wrestling uh, would be would be a huge plus, a huge plus. And it's not un- it's it's not unlikely. It's, 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 there's a chance it could happen. I mean, he has a great history with TNA, you know, and they brought the TNA title back. And I, I'm actually on board with that 100% right now, and I'm going to get into that uh, shortly. Uh, I'm on board with the TNA title being brought back and Moose and everything. Uh, and like I said, I'll get into that shortly. Uh, but, but to get Sting back, and, and Lord knows they have the money. Lord knows they have the money. Three to five appearances. You know, and, and and it's not like he's gonna be at uh, Bash at the Brewery three or anything like that. Uh, you're not gonna see Sting, you know, showing up uh, at that show. But he'll be on TV. He'll be at the major pay per views. So I I say Impact Wrestling, go for it. Just go for it. Just get Sting on the phone and see if we get him. See if we get that name there. And I know AEW. They said AEW was interested in bringing Sting. Uh, there was rumor that Sting was going to be. You know, presenting the winner of the TNE, TNT uh, Championship, which is their version of the TV title, uh, to the winner. Um, I think it's Cody Rhodes against Lance Archer. Uh, so whoever won that match, it was rumored that Sting was going to be presenting that title. But we all know now that it's Mike Tyson who's going to be presenting that title. Did they want Sting and he turned it down? I don't know. That's, that's that's very likely. I don't see why they would want Mike Tyson over Sting to 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 hand uh, hand out that title. Uh, but you never know. Maybe Sting turned it down. Maybe something's making. Maybe something's brewing with Impact Wrestling. You know, they're they're make doing a lot of signings. A number of signings this week. You know, Sue Young was signed. Um, Crazy Steve is back. Tasha Steele's signed with Impact Wrestling, so they have a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of new guys. They're they're handing out the money and they're doing the signing, making the signings. And you never know, Sting Sting uh, could see Sting back in Impact Wrestling. It would be a be a fantastic. It would be a huge plus for Impact Wrestling. Let's put it that way, a huge plus if uh, they could get Sting. Keep my fingers crossed for that. But as I said, there were a lot of signings. Let's move on. So there were a lot of signings this week. Uh, as I mentioned, Sue Young was signed. Uh, Tasha Steeles has signed. Crazy Steve. Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are rumored to be in serious negotiations right now with Impact Wrestling. And this is an, this is a story I read two days ago. It's not like it's a story was out a month ago. This was a story I read two days ago. You know, Scott Demore, um accidentally appeared on you know, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson. They have a, a podcast. He was, Luke, Scott, uh, Scott Demore was calling, I believe, Carl Anderson. Uh, didn't know the podcast was going on. Didn't know they were recording. So he gave him a call. And people are thinking, why is he calling? They must be negotiating. You know, and... And Anderson did say Anderson did say that we're we're recording the podcast. As soon as the podcast is done, I'll give you a call back. So could they be negotiating there? I think so. I think they are. I think there's a negotiation a negotiation going on. And people are gonna say, well, you know, Gallows and Anderson, they want to go back to New Japan Pro Wrestling. First of all, what how does everybody know that they're that they're dead set on going back to New Japan Pro Wrestling? Maybe they want to do something different. You know, AEW, AEW is there. Yes, they can sign with AEW, but I'm I'm starting to this Gallows and Anderson thing uh, negotiating with Impact Wrestling. There's a lot of lot of uh, hints that are being that are being dropped here. One, this 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 um this phone call, this accidental uh, appearance on their podcast. And if you're watching Impact Wrestling, um, the North segment where. Uh, the North were called Luke Gallows' favorite uh, tag team. You know, just dropping Luke Gallows' name there was was interesting. So I, I'm, I have a gut feeling that Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are going to sign with Impact Wrestling. I have a gut feeling it's going to happen, and that would just be fantastic. Just think of Gallows and Anderson versus the North. That would just be an absolutely 
killer, killer match. You know, and again, back to the New Japan Pro Wrestling. What's saying that they they sign with Impact Wrestling that they don't put in their clause that that they want to be able to appear for New Japan? Is Scott DeMore going to say no to that? Don Callis is going to say no to that? Absolutely not. They're not going to say no to that. And people say, oh, well, New Japan won't, won't allow that because of the way TNA treated Okada 55,000 years ago. You know, that's all in the past. That's a long time ago. They're still not holding a grudge over that. Anyone who thinks that New Japan Pro Wrestling is still holding a grudge over... over um, the, the former management, TNA's former management, the way they handled Okada, and that New Japan Pro Wrestling still has a grudge over that, that's just absurd. That's absurd. It's, there's no way. There's no way that they're still holding a grudge. So, I could see, and, and besides, the Moore and Callis, they, they apologize for that. So, it's all, it's all water under the bridge now, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, and again, they could put in their contract, you know, that they're, that they, they're able to go wrestle for New Japan. And like I said, Scott Demore, Luke, um, Scott Demore, Don Callis will not say no to that. So, again, my gut feeling Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson will be signing with Impact Wrestling. And we are going to get the North, Josh Alexander's Ethan Page against Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. That's that's my feeling. And um, it just, just thinking about it makes me very, very excited. So... Speaking of uh, the North, if if we saw the segment again, uh, if you saw their segment this week on Impact Wrestling, it was another comedy segment, but I think it was a lot better than the first one. And I actually enjoyed this segment, mainly because one of my pals, Travis Moore, a guy that I had, I have another show, another podcast, uh, I've interviewed him. Travis Moore was one of the smo- the schmoes. Uh, Travis Moore, up and coming wrestler here in in, uh, in Ontario, he was the one wearing the headgear. So that was safe Travis Moore. The other guy was, was Matthew Grant, who is one half of a team, a tag team up here called the Empire, a former crossbody pro wrestling tag team champions, uh, the Empire. So it was Matthew Grant and Safe Travis Moore. And I, I like the segment. One, because we didn't get too much of, um, of crazy, crazy George the Iceman. He just, short segment, just said his thing, made an announcement. And um, I like how... I liked how uh, Josh Alexander again playing the serious role, and uh, and Ethan Ethan Page was funny. Ethan Page was funny, and I I, I the, you think about it, the more I look at it now, it's more of them just making you know making a mockery of the lack of competition in Impact Wrestling, which leads me back to saying them making fun of the lack of competition in Impact Wrestling only cements my feelings further that Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson will be signing with Impact Wrestling. This is all leading up to it. And again, they said Luke Gallows' name. It's all leading up to it, man. It's all leading up to it, man. I just, I know it, man. I just know it. I mean, just the, the making fun of the lack of competition. And that, now they're going to get the competition with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. I have that feeling, man. And I'm getting very excited. I'm getting very excited thinking about that, man. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, safe Travis Moore, by the way. Um, I just want to give him a shout out because he made a, it was his Impact Wrestling debut. Uh, so, um, I mean, he took a hell of a beating from Josh Alexander, uh, but, uh, congratulations on that, Travis Moore, uh, you deserve it. Um, all right, so let's move on. So, Moose, Moose, I initially was not on board with this whole TNA thing, but watching that opening, watching the opening to the, to the show where, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, the, the normal opening was cut off by Moose, and we got the TNA, the, op- the old opening with the TNA narrator, uh, Barry Scott, uh, doing the talking. And um, I absolutely love this man. I absolutely love this man. Just, I loved how the impact, the TNA stars were edited in. You know, kind of deceptive editing, <clears throat> kind of deceptive editing to make it seem like that they were praising Moose. That was fantastic. That was fantastic. I love that, man. 
you know and when i saw that like i i you know i said before if anyone can make th this thing with tna work it's moose you know and bq said that as well and i agreed with him uh and i said that on uh on the previous show and moose is making this work man Moose is making this work. I'm on board, man. I'm looking forward to seeing what... And I love how he pulled himself out of that number one contenders tournament. Because I thought this was just going to lead to a um, title unification match. But I don't think we're going to get that for a while. Moose is going to hold that title. And he's going he's gonna to take on former TNA stars. And uh, he took on one this week in Suicide. Uh, it was a terrific match. It was a terrific match. I the only issue I had with it was it was his first match as TNA champion. He says he's the greatest TNA champion of all time. There's I don't think Suicide should have given him you know as tough a match as as we saw. I think he should have just ran down Suicide um, rather quickly. Suicide getting some Suicide maybe getting some. Uh, some offense uh, here and there, but uh, Moose should have just ran him down. Uh, but Suicide, uh, we, the, the, we got a ref bump. Suicide had the cover, had a three count, but because the ref was a ref was uh, knocked out or, or knocked down, uh, Suicide uh, didn't win because there was no ref to do the count. I don't think it should have gone that far. I think um, Moose should have uh, Moose should have just ran him down and um, and scored basically just a a a, a fairly easy victory. Uh, and then, they, then they could have done like um, in the upcoming weeks. So uh, get more um, former TNA guys, you know, challenging Moose. You know, Moose upset that Moose thinks he's the greatest TNA t champion of all time. Challenging Moose, you know, and and the opponents get more more difficult, more difficult, more difficult, until finally we have the one TNA guy, you know, weeks from now or months from now that finally dethrones Moose for the for the TNA. Um, championship you know they, they they could do it that way but but nonetheless however however they do it i'm all in on this i'm i'm all in on this moose thing i'm i'm a fan of it i'm glad i'm glad it's back i might have uh, i might have uh, been skeptical uh, the last uh week or two but i'm in man i'm in 100 percent. this is this is gonna get good and it's, it's only gonna this is i'm gonna say this is good it's only gonna get better all right so speaking of suicide I know uh, BQ did a, uh, a little uh, mini podcast on who he thinks suicide is. And I'm going to talk about now who I think suicide is. Right? I'm going to talk about who I think suicide is. And um, and hear me out on this one. Well, I'm going to come out and say, well, I'll, I'll say the name right away and then I'll, then I'll explain it. Uh, I think Chris Sabin. I think Chris Sabin is suicide. And, and here's why. And here's why. Uh... A few reasons. One, if you notice during that match with Moose, Josh Matthews called Suicide a TNA original. You know, okay, that's fine. He called him a TNA original. Suicide is not a TNA original. TNA began in 2002. Suicide, I think, I think he debuted in 2008, 2009. So he's not really a TNA original. He wasn't there from, from the beginning. Chris Sabin is a TNA original. Chris Sabin, I believe, debuted late 2002, early 2003. So he's considered, he's, he's more of a TNA original than Suicide. You know, I, if you're going to think of TNA originals, Chris Sabin is a TNA original. So that's, that's one thing. I mean, why would he call Suicide? It's just a little subtle hint there that, that Chris Sabin is under that mask. Two, Chris Sabin you know, tweeted uh, the other day that the day's going to come very soon where you're going to read that um, Chris Sabin will be wrestling on Impact Wrestling. And he's coming off an injury. He's coming off an injury. So I'm thinking he's wearing that mask. He's, as, he's, he's suicide right now because he is getting prepared for a comeback. He's getting prepared for a return as a full-time professional wrestler in Impact Wrestling. That that has me think and and again, suicide, you know, giving Moose the the tough match. When you think about it, he should like I said, Moose should have ran right through suicide, but he didn't. Suicide gave him a very, very good match. I wouldn't be surprised if Moose challenges someone. Suicide comes out again. Moose says, I've already defeated you. And Suicide grabs the mic and says, you defeated Suicide. He takes the mask off. It's Chris Sabin. And he says, but you haven't defeated Chris Sabin. And then we get the match 
Moose versus Chris Sabin with special guest referee Sting. There, there's the scenario right there. There's a scenario right there. So that's why I think Chris Sabin is suicide. And even if he's not suicide right now, I think he's going to... No, you know what? He's suicide. Well, yeah, he's suicide right now. I think he's suicide right now. I think Chris Sabin is playing suicide. He's working off the ring rust, uh, getting ready for that comeback, as I said. And uh, I think he's suicide. So that that's that's my thought right there. And I was on uh, I was on the uh, social media, and a couple of people are actually think it's it's Chris Sabin as well. So there, my my thoughts: Chris Sabin is suicide. There you go. So that's it for me. I really have uh, covered everything I want to cover. I want to say thank you very much for joining me today. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye bye.